take the benefit of this night of Juma, inshallah, to recite Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha for the Isari Sawab of Marhum Buta Talib. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Ya Kana Abdu wa Iya Kana Stain. Ehdena Surat Al Mustaqeen. Surat Al Ladina Anta Alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين May Almighty Allah shower His mercy upon all our deceased especially those whose names were mentioned tonight here May Allah grant them a place in the service of Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salatu wassalam forgive their sins and shortcomings and accept them in this abundance of mercy and forgiveness and blessings inshallah all together let us recite salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad in our discussion about surah mubarak ye isra if you remember we reached verse number 50 Four. Verse number 55. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Warabuka alamo biman fis sama vault of al arz. Walakat faddalna badan nabiyina. Ala bazin wa ataina dawd zabura. This verse is basically connected to the verse before but because time was not uh, sufficient last night so we did not explain uh, the translation and the meaning of this verse last night last night verse was saying to the people including mu'mineen that your lord is aware of you he knows better than yourself yourself and therefore he, if he wants to be kind to someone, he can be. And if he wants to punish someone, so that be. And we did not make you agent over them, responsible over the people of their iman and faith. No, your job is to convey the message. Now here, the same rhythm and tune goes bit more high. Not only Allah knows you, but Allah knows whoever is in the earth and heavens. Allah knows. Everything which is in earth and heavens and those who live and reside in the heavens and earth. Allah knows. Now, here making this point that Allah knows or as a basic foundation argument Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know says another point let me first translate for you this verse your Lord knows best whoever is in the heavens and in the earth, certainly, walaqad faddalna ba'dan nabiyyina ala ba'din. Certainly, we gave some prophets an advantage over the others. Wa'athayna Dawuda zabura. And we gave David the Psalms. Or Zabur. Okay. So, as I said, on the basis of same argument, that Allah knows everybody. Allah know you. Allah knows you and Allah knows everything. Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in this part of the verse responds to some of the accusations of Mushrikeen of Makkah. 
you know what they used to say they used to say that uh, how come god has left the whole world one side and selected this young man who is an orphan uh, with no money with no status as his messenger so many dignified people here elite here big deals here affluent people here influential people here people of a status position money wealth all that how come almighty left all of them and this young poor man who is often whose father also passed away allah has made him his prophet and not only prophet but seal of the prophets and best of the prophets this is answer to this balaghat faddalna ba'd an-nabiyyin ala ba'd oh we know what is the criteria of virtue and preference of some on others we know why almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made adam adam ibrahim khalilullah isa ruhullah musa kalimullah now we know we know and we are the one who decide who must be better than others don't think because he is often he is young he is poor he has no big uh, affluent position in the society so he does not deserve to be no we know what he deserves fazzalna ba'd an-nabiyyin ala ba'd we have preferred some prophets over other prophets so in other words all the prophets are not on one level and there is a difference of level and status among the prophets now maybe you will thinking some places quran says we don't distinguish between the prophets la no farq we do not distinguish between them and here says fazzalna ba'dhum ala ba'd no this is no contradiction when almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say we don't distinguish means we don't differentiate between them being a prophet of allah in other words they all brought same message there is no doubt about it so we don't distinguish them we don't differentiate between them that he is that type of nabi and he is that type of nabi and he is no nabi is nabi nabi is basically messengers of allah so being nabi we don't don't distinguish don't differentiate but the same nabi may have a better status than another ambiya these are two different things completely message is the same and in bringing message same message we don't distinguish they all of them brought message of tawhid they all of them brought message of maad and qiyamah and resurrection they all brought message of accountability of amal and deeds they all warned us about our akhirah no doubt about it there is no difference between them in their message in their work but it does not mean that in their status and in their position also there is no difference faddalna ba'd an-nabiyyin ala ba'd we preferred some on others and then says wa atayna daud zabura and we gave david the psalms or zabur now what is the reason of mentioning daud here a lot of discussion in different tafasir is there but i will not go in details uh, one of the which is most likely and it appears to be very close to the Uh, apparent meaning of the verse is that look nabi daud alayhi salatu was salam has great emperor under his control you know they would they call him what king david na they call him king david so he was a emperor he was a very big king and huge spans of land was under his control all right but almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that we gave daud 
kingdom, land, empire, money, position, status. No, no, no. Wa atayna Dawood zabura. What is greatness of Dawood? Not his kingdom, not his power, not his empire, not him being king. But the criteria of Dawood is that we gave him Zabur. What is Zabur? You know what is Psalms after Nabi Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Torah was given to Nabi Musa. Psalms, Zabur was given to Nabi Dawood. Torah is book of Sharia, laws, regulations. Psalms, Zabur is not book of Sharia. It is book of supplications, du'as. Hmm? So, book of du'as means what? Means path of closeness and taqarrub ila Allah. Means we gave Dawood recipe how to get close to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The spiritual journey. Psalms is basically a spiritual book. Spirituality and siren saluk and du'as and supplication and communication with Lord and God. That is the subject of Zabur. Now Quran is, why mentioned here Dawood especially? That look at Dawood. Dawood was king, but Dawood was not important because of his kingship. Dawood was important because he got psalms, which is recipe, which is method of journey toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, toward closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are talking about Muhammad, that how come we give Muhammad the best of the positions, seal of the prophethood, Best of the prophethood, prophets are. Why? Because he, you don't know, we know. From that aspect, he is on the highest level. He is not rich, so what? If he is an orphan, so what? If he is somebody with no family and no affluent position, so what? Look at Dao. With all the kingdom which we gave him, what was important for Dawood to become Dawood was not kingdom, was having this journey and path of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ عِدُوَ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ فَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ كَشْفَ الزَّرُّرِ أَنْكُمْ وَلَا تَحْوِيلَا Again speaking to Mushrikeen, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam قُلْ تِلْ O Rasul O Nabi Ya Rasul Allah Invoke those whom you claim to be gods besides him. He said tell them you believe in the gods other than Allah. You believe that they are God, they are deity. Okay, if they are God, experiment them. What type of God they are? Fala yamalikuna kashfadurri ankum. They have no power to remove your distress. They can't help you. When you are in trouble, they can't help you. Wala tahwila. Neither they can bring any change. In your state. You see, worship of gods, worship of gods is based upon two things to seek profit and to repel harm. Jalbul manfa'a wa daf'u zarar, we say it in Arabic. Jalbul manfa'a to seek benefit and to repel harm. 
Therefore, people used to worship these gods. But he, Quran is saying, O Prophet, tell them, you worshipping gods for what? They cannot repel any harm or distress or grief from you. Neither they can change your status and benefit you. What type of gods these gods are? Olao ikalladina, verse number 57. Olao ikalladina yaduuna yabtaguna ila rabbihim al wasila. Ayyuhum akrab wa yarjuna rahmata wa yakhafuna azaba. Inna azaba rabbika kana mahdura. This verse is difficult verse in understanding uh, translation. So please bear with me, come along with me to understand the meaning. Now Prophet any, continues of that address to the mushrikeen, those people who are worshipping others than Allah. Referring to them, referring to them, it is continuation of that talk. Or speech. Ula yadun. Those gods, for example, not gods, those people you believe that they are God or they can help you independently, they themselves are seeking toward their Lord Vasila and recourse. Hmm? They themselves are the ones who supplicate, seeking a recourse to their Lord. Ayyuhum akrab, whoever is nearer to him. Vayarjuna rahmatahu, and they are hopeful, expecting his mercy. Vayakhafuna azabahu, and fearing his punishment. Inna adab rabbika kana mahzura. Indeed, azab and punishment of your Lord is a something to be aware of it. You must be warned. You must be aware of that. It's something very serious. So, little bit, let me explain to you. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In this verse, in other words, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mainly referring to those people who made Jesus, for example, God, who made Moses God, who made, for example, angels as gods and started to worship them. No, Quran says that you are asking from them. You are calling them. But they themselves are dependent on Allah. They themselves looking for a means, wasila, a means hmm, to reach to Allah. They themselves are expecting and hopeful for mercy of Allah. They themselves are fearful from punishment of Allah, azab of Allah. So how they can be God for you? They can never be God for you. Mm, very important, very important brothers and sisters. So it is referring to those people who take... Jesus, for example, or angels, for example, or some other personalities, for example, as their God. And they seek help from them and they worship them. They themselves are seeking means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Themselves, in between, they are competing to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is 
means to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Of course, the best way and best means to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is iman in Allah. If you have faith in Allah, you can get close to Allah. If you pray, you get close to Allah. If you fast, you get close to Allah. If you pay zakat, you get close to Allah. If you go for jihad, you get close to Allah. Amal is saliha. All the good deeds are the best route to get too close to Allah. Now these people like Jesus or for example angels or pious people or saints, you think that they are gods and you can worship them. No, they themselves are seeking close to a closeness to Allah through means. And what is the mean? These amal saliha are the mean. A very quick point here. So what about, they cannot be means for us to Allah? Yes, they, these Ambiya, Jesus or Awliya, they can be means for us to reach to Allah. But means, not the purpose. Very, very big difference. Very big difference. We, when we say that we are asking Allah for the sake of, for example, Ahlul Bayt, Salamullahi alayhi majma'een. We don't worship Ahlul Bayt. We don't believe that Ahlul Bayt, for example, can help us independently. Of course, that is shirk. Of course, that is out of the right path. Huh? Without any doubt, it's a shirk huh? associating with Allah. Independent is only Allah. Nothing is independent other than Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, awliya means Ahlul Bayt. Anbiya means Prophet and people like Nabi Jesus or other Anbiya. They are close servants of Allah. And you can use their closeness to Allah as a bridge for you to get closer to Allah. But they are just a bridge, don't forget. There's a big difference between bridge and destination. If you regard them as destination, sorry, you have made a big mistake. They, they are not destination. They are not independent. They cannot do anything out of their own. This Tuesday nights when we read Dua Mubarakai Tawassul, which is a beautiful dua, what we say? Allahumma inna nas'aluka wa natwajjahu alayk bi nabiyyika nabiyyir Wallah, we turn toward you we ask you for the sake of your Nabi, who was Nabi of mercy and Rahma. Ya Imam al Rahma, oh leader of mercy. Inna tawajjahna wa stashwana wa tawassalna bika ilallah. We seeking intercession of you, we seeking your middleman role, your help, your assistance. Where to? Ilallah. Toward Almighty Allah. You are path toward Allah. Antum subul. Antum subul. You are the pathways toward Allah. But not you are Allah. Not you are independent. Not that you can do anything out of your own. No, no, nothing, nothing. Not at all. In fact, I have a number of times I have explained to you, brothers and sisters. Because they are greater and more stronger mawjood or existence of Allah, existences created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore their dependence on Allah is even more than us. I always give you example that you get a uh, hundred watt bulb, 100 watt bulb depends on power station, you know, grid where power electricity is coming. But how much to burn this bulb, how much electricity you need? 100 watt, right? If you can pull that 100 watt, you will be able to burn that globe off or bulb off 100 watt. 
So dependence of this 100 watt bulb is how much? 100 watt on the source of power, on the powerhouse. But what about if you have a chandelier like this one, mashallah, huh? where probably, I cannot remember, 200 globes are burning and each of maybe 500 watt. Just imagine, huh? right? Huh? They are not depending on 100 watt. They are depending on thousands of watt on the power station. So if power drops, this chandelier will not burn. But that hundred pot will maybe burn. You understand? Now, Ambiya, Awliya, Muqarribeen ilallah, like Ahlul Bayt, Salawatullahi wa salam, they are much bigger and greater in the existence, in their wujud. And therefore, their dependence on Allah is also greater. And therefore, they are more beggar than what we are. Don't think that they are richer. They are richer in a sense, but they are poorer in a sense. They are poorer toward Allah. Therefore, Prophet used to say, Al-Fakhru Fakhri. Poverty is my pride. Why? Because the way he is beggar and poor in front of Allah, no one is beggar, dependent and poor in front of Allah. Do you admit me, me or not? Huh? So don't even, even think that when we make tawassul and we make them wasila, we are trying to say that they are independently something. No, not at all. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ Verse number 58 وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا أَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا There is not a town but we will destroy it before the day of resurrection or punish it with a severe punishment that has been written in the book Allah Akbar Allahu Akbar. There are situations when this thing is being prescribed. Prescribed, brothers and sisters, for certain societies that they will, their destiny is destruction. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now I'm thinking, must I discuss this issue or, uh, you know, uh, leave it, huh? I don't know, but let me, I think, let's inshallah tomorrow night, huh? Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, huh? Tomorrow night is a weekend night, inshallah, a little bit longer weekend night. Any questions? Okay. If there are no questions, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, we are now getting very close to nights of Qadr, please. Very important part of Ramadan is starting now, onward, coming nights. Please try your best to join, inshallah, in du'as, in ibadat, in nawafil, in these, you know, gatherings of discussions and understanding of Allah's book and message, inshallah. Nobody can guarantee next Ramadan we will be around or not. Huh? Let us take benefit of this blessing of Allah. This year we are blessed, alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Huh?